From WFRB TV Local 5, your local election headquarters, this is Newsmaker Sunday with your host, Tom Zalaski. Good morning. Welcome to Newsmakers Sunday. I'm Tom Zalaski. Today we discuss the growing issue of hunger during this coronavirus pandemic. A Feeding America study shows one in five children face hunger and the problem impacts all ages. 74% of food insecure homes have seniors living in the house. And in all, 700,000 people in Wisconsin do not know where their next meal is coming from. We welcome in Patty Habeck, the president and CEO of Feeding America Northeast Wisconsin. Patty, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Some frightening numbers we just saw up on the screen. How wide of an area, first of all, does Feeding America Northeast Wisconsin serve? So we um, are the largest hunger relief organization in the state. We actually cover 65% of eastern Wisconsin out on, in our whole footprint. In northeast Wisconsin, we cover the 26 counties of northeast Wisconsin. So we, we cover quite a, quite a bit of territory. So this has been going on now essentially for some two months since this coronavirus pandemic really began to hit us. Uh, what are you seeing in general out there in the community? So there's, there's two things that we're seeing. I mean, one, we're seeing the need. Um, the need is great and growing. Um, there were some surprising trends. When this first kicked in, we thought we'd see an immediate um, uptick of, of individuals in need, but it actually has been um, from the individual perspective, the demand on the pantries was at initially stable and it's steadily growing now as, as we move further into the pandemic. There was a lot of um, people that just didn't know what to make of the sudden um, the sudden pivot and the sudden loss of jobs and what were they going to do and how do they enter into the hunger relief system. So it took a little bit of time for it to start rolling into, um, for us to start seeing the, the end user demand start going up. But um, as soon as the the uh, the impact hit Northeast Wisconsin, we saw the demand on the food bank go up tremendously. So we've been operating in a in a um, very urgent space for for two months now. Um, on the flip side, we're also seeing a lot of beauty. The way the community is coming together and wrapping around the the need and um, really stepping up. There's been a lot of very beautiful moments and great stories that have been coming out of this as well. How much of a difference have you seen in the need from before this pandemic hit and what you're doing right now? How much more of a workload at your place? Yeah, so at the food banks, um, we have um, we as initially saw a several hundred fold increase in demand. That was the immediate uh, knee jerk right after the um, right after the safer at home orders were, were put into place. But since that time, it's come down a little bit, but we're staying at a really a, a sustained 70 percent increase in demand on our product. And um, since we work in millions of pounds, if you do the math, that's that's a massive increase in demand um, coming out of the food banks. So I did hear you correctly. It was an initial 700 fold increase in, in demand. And now you're still up 70%, true? 70% is yeah. what we're sustaining at. So that's above typical times. And, and it, it'll, um, it'll uh, go up and down a little bit, um, but that 70% is, is pretty much where it's staying around. Every once in a while, we see an increase in demand um, right after the, um, the Thursday jobs reports come out um, that that kind of must trigger a lot of the food pantries to start pulling more food from us, expecting that the demand will increase in the communities as well. Patty, where do your donated food items come from? So typically um, we get donated items from growers and grocers and manufacturers, farmers um, and individuals all across um, locally, regionally and nationally. But during the pandemic, what we saw is as uh, retailers were really struggling keeping up with the demands on the grocery stores, there's a massive supply chain disruption that affected um, the donations coming in. Manufacturers who typically would donate um, directly to us were now doing everything they could to just keep food on the retail shelves, on the grocery store shelves. So we had to quickly pivot and um, go from a, a predominantly donation-based um, income of product to doing a lot of purchasing. And um, what, what we also saw was we were still getting a lot of um, donated product, but it started coming in from food service and, and from manufacturers who typically supply food service like restaurants or, or hotels. And um, that product comes into us, it's beautiful product, but it has to typically be repackaged or in some way broken down so that it can reach the end user in a, in a size and a shape that a family can use. So what do you need most right now? 
So um, what we are saying right now is generally for the hunger relief organizations as a whole, whether it's the food banks or the food pantries, money is the most helpful because we have changed to a largely purchase situation. And um, what we need to do is make sure that we're maintaining purchase product and having those trucks coming in at a regular clip to keep up with demand. So right now we are using um, uh, more purchase product than any type of donated product because of the safety factors, but also because we need to, to purchase at a scale that we've never had to, to do before. So money is the most helpful at this point. All right, to make sure money can get to you, uh, I take it you have a website or a Facebook page where people can quick look up and know where to send? Yes, um, so if you want to help the hunger relief system, we ask you to go to our website at www.feedingamericawi.org. And if you have a preference that it stays in a certain region or community, you can always put that in the notes and we will make sure that we honor that. You mentioned a couple of times uh, community support. Um, are, are you seeing an increase in support or are we in a situation where so many people are losing their jobs that people who would otherwise donate are now not in a position to do so? So we are seeing um, financial donations come in at a more frequent pace than they were before COVID. And that's a very positive thing. It means people are really looking to help and to, um, to share, you know, a lot, of, um, a lot of the donations came in right after the stimulus payments went out. People who might still have jobs and not need the stimulus payments were paying that forward into the hunger relief system. And, and that was really helpful, but that's starting to plateau. And um, what I remind people is, is that need has increased. And so, so the demand for, um, for product will continue to increase. And so we need to continue um, requesting financial support so that we can keep purchasing the food to move out into the communities. Patty Habeck, the president, CEO, Feeding America, Northeast Wisconsin. We thank you so much for joining us thank this you, morning. Tom. All right. Up next, we're going to talk with Craig Robbins. He is the executive director of Paul's Pantry in Green Bay, so we invite you to stay with us.